When you talk about freedom, don't point to that beloved parchment, the Constitution, as a symbol of your enduring freedom. It is a representative of a form of government which seemingly no longer exists in this country today. The Constitution has been thrown out the window, the Republic shoved aside and replaced with a democracy. The thing is, most people in this country remain unaware that this is so because they simply do not know the truth, what lies beyond the myths. Your so-called government is not going to tell you either. To even begin to understand what has happened to the Republic, we must look backward in time to a period following the Civil War. We must go back to the year 1871, which was the beginning of the decline of the Republic. When we examine what happened during that time in our history, we begin to piece together this troubling, perplexing puzzle that is America. Only then should we answer as to whether we are indeed a free people or not. The date is February 21st, 1871, and the 41st Congress is in session. I refer you to the Acts of the 41st Congress, Section 34, Session 3, Chapters 61 and 62. On this date in the history of our nation, Congress passed an act titled, An Act to Provide a Government for the District of Columbia. This is also known as the Act of 1871. What does this mean? Well, it means that Congress, under no constitutional authority to do so, created a separate form of government for the District of Columbia, which is a 10 square mile parcel of land. The Act of 1871 was passed at a vulnerable time in America. Our nation was essentially bankrupt, weakened, and financially depleted in the aftermath of the Civil War. The Civil War itself was nothing more than a calculated front for some petty fancy footwork by corporate backroom players. It was a strategic maneuver by European interests, the international bankers, who were intent upon gaining a stronghold on the neck and the coffers of America. The Congress realized our country was in dire financial straits, so they cut a deal with the international bankers. In those days, the Rothschilds of London were dipping their fingers into everyone's pie, thereby incurring a debt to said bankers. If you think about banks, we know they do not just lend us money out of the goodness of their hearts. A bank will not do anything for you unless it is entirely in their best interest to do so. There has to be some sort of collateral or some string attached which puts you and me into a subservient position. This was true back in 1871. The conniving international bankers were not about to lend our floundering nation any money without some serious stipulations. So. They devised a brilliant way of getting their foot in the door of the United States, a prize they had coveted for some time, but had been unable to grasp thanks to our founding fathers who despised them and held them in check. And thus, the Act of 1871 was passed. In essence, this act formed the corporation known as the United States. Note the capitalization because it is important. This corporation, owned by foreign interests, moved right in and shoved the original organic version of the Constitution into a dusty corner. With the Act of 1871, our Constitution was defaced in the sense that the title was block capitalized and the word for was changed to the word of in the title. The original Constitution drafted by the Founding Fathers was written in this manner. The Constitution for the United States of America. The altered version reads, The Constitution of the United States of America. It is the corporate constitution. It is not the same document you might think it is. The corporate constitution operates in an economic capacity and has been used to fool the people into thinking it is the same parchment that governs the republic. It absolutely is not. Capitalization, an insignificant change? Not when one is referring to the context of a legal document. It isn't. Such minor alterations have had major impacts on each subsequent generation born in this country. What the Congress did with the passage of the Act of 1871 was create an entirely new document, a constitution for the government of the District of Columbia. The kind of government they created was a corporation. The new, altered constitution serves as a constitution of the corporation and not that of America. Think about that for a moment. Incidentally, this corporate constitution does not benefit the republic. It serves only to benefit the corporation. It does nothing good for you or me, and it operates outside of the original constitution. Instead of absolute rights guaranteed under the organic constitution, we now have relative rights or privileges. One example of this is the sovereign's right to travel, which has been transformed 
under corporate government policy into a privilege which we must be licensed to engage in. This operates outside of the original Constitution. So, Congress committed treason against the people who were considered sovereign under the Declaration of Independence and the organic Constitution. When we consider the word sovereign, we must think about what that word means. So, what does sovereign mean to you? According to Webster's Dictionary, sovereign is defined as chief or highest supreme, supreme in power, superior in all to all others, independent of and unlimited by any other, possessing or entitled to original and independent authority or jurisdiction. In other words, our government was created by and for sovereigns, the free citizens who were deemed the highest authority. Only the people can be sovereign. Remember that. Government cannot be sovereign. We can also look to the Declaration of Independence where we read, government is subject to the consent of the governed. That's supposed to be us, the sovereigns. Do you feel like a sovereign nowadays? You see, you're presumed to know the law. This is ironic because as a people, we are taught basically nothing about the law in school. We were made to memorize obscure factoids and paragraphs here and there, such as the preamble, and they gloss over the Bill of Rights. But we are not told about the law, nor do our corporate government schools delve us into the Constitution in any great depth. After all, they were put into place to indoctrinate and dumb down the masses, not to teach us anything. We were not told that we were sold out to the foreign interest and made beneficiaries of the debt occurred by Congress to the international bankers. For generations, American citizens have had the bulk of their earnings confiscated to pay on a massive debt that they as a people did not incur. There are many, many things the people have not been told. How do you feel about being made a beneficiary of someone else's massive debt without your knowledge or consent? Are we going to keep going along with this? When you hear some individuals say the Constitution is null and void, think about how our government has transformed over time from a municipal or service-oriented entity to a corporate or profit-oriented entity. We are living under the myth that this is lawful, but it is not. We are being ruled by a de facto or unlawful form of government, the corporate body of the death mongers, the controllers. With the passage of the Act of 1871, a series of subtle and overt deceptions were set in motion, all in conjunction and conclusion with the Congress, who knowingly and deliberately sold the people down the river. Did they tell you this in government school? I doubt it. They were too busy drumming the fictional version of history into your brain and mind by failing to disclose what they did to the American people. The people became ignorant of what is happening. The United States government is basically a corporate instrument of the international bankers. This means you are owned by the corporation from birth to death. The corporate United States also holds ownership of all your assets, your property, and yes, even your children. Does this sound untrue? Think long and hard about all those bills you pay, all those various taxes and fines and licenses you must pay for. Yes, they got you by the pockets. Actually, they had you by the ass for as long as you've been alive. In your heart, you know it's true. Don't believe any of this? Read up on the 14th Amendment. Check out how free you really are. With the Act of 1871 and subsequent legislation, such as the purportedly ratified 14th Amendment, our once great nation of sovereigns has been subverted from a republic to a democracy. As in the case under Roman civil law, our ignorance of the facts has led to our silence. Our silence has been construed as our consent to become beneficiaries of debt we did not occur. The sovereign people have been deceived for hundreds of years into thinking they remain free and independent, when in actuality we continue to be slaves and servants to the corporation. Treason was committed against the people in 1871 by the Congress. This could have been corrected through the decades by some honest men, assuming there were some. But it was not, mainly due to the lust for money and power. Nothing new there. Are we to forgive and justify this crime against the people? You have lost more freedom than you may realize due to corporate infiltration of the so-called government. We will lose more unless we turn away from a democracy that is the direct road to disaster and restore our constitutional republic.